this video, we're going to talk about MFC media plates or membrane equal poliform. This refers to standard methods 9222D. Pico coliform media is a media that you can really count on. So when we talk about membrane filtration, I like to start with the five P's. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. I prepare by, when I start a video, by having a hot cup of coffee ready at my side. When we talk about pico coliform and membrane filtration, first thing I like to mention is your filter funnels. Whether you're using a glass filter funnel like this one, or a taller poly cell phone filter, you want to make sure of a couple of things. A, make sure your filter has been properly cleaned. B, make sure that the filter has been properly sterilized prior to each use. And C, which this is very important, check your filter out before each use. Make sure there's no deep nicks, cuts, or scratches on the interior of the wall, as this can harbor bacteria, which can skew your counts or cross-contaminate a sterile control. Make sure your filter manifold is clear and free from obstruction so that the sample passes freely through the filter funnel into your waste container. Those are some of the good things to, listen, to adhere to when we do membrane filtration. And when we do our three 30 mil rinses on the inside of the filter funnel when we're filtering, you also want to use sterile buffered dilution water so that we don't expose those stressed bacteria to any further harsh pH changes because we want to recover as many of those bacteria as we can in one milliliter sample. <clears throat> Some like it hot. When we talk about fecal coliform bacteria, we're talking about bacteria that are thermotolerant. How thermotolerant? Well, we incubate at an optimum temperature of 44.5 degrees Celsius, plus or minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. That's 112.1 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really hot. Why do we do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. When we incubate at those high temperatures, it makes it selective for or encourages the growth of fecal coliform bacteria. It also makes it differential in that it discourages the growth of other bacteria that may compete, and they really can't grow well in those high temperatures. So it discourages the growth of many competing organisms so that when we do our counts, we're typically looking at just fecal coliform colonies. When we incubate too, I like to mention a quick little thing. I use a little device like this one here, and there's many different kinds of them, but this is a continuously monitoring temperature device, and one end just plugs into your computer. It may have a USB port or something like this, and the other end plugs into your incubator. This will give you a continuously monitored record of the temperatures of your autoclave so that if the power went out or some other anomaly or thing happened while you were away from the laboratory or asleep, you can prove that your temperatures were consistent throughout the incubation period. This can be especially handy when being audited by an authoritative body like NELAP, for example. Why so blue? Why do we get blue colonies, nice dark blue colonies, when we do MFC media? Well, the reason is because when fecal coliform bacteria are growing, they ferment lactose, and this creates an acid. This acid reacts with the aniline blue dye that's in MFC media, creating a nice, deep, dark blue color. Very easy to count, works great. The color of your prepared media plate using MFC media may be anywhere from a cornflower blue to a hazy cranberry red. That's because 1% of rosolic acid is typically added to the media. We add rosolic acid to increase the differentiality of the media itself. How does it do that? Well, the rosolic acid will discourage the growth of many gram-positive organisms which can compete for room on that prepared media plate filter. So, oftentimes, rosolic acid is added to the MFC media to, again, discourage the growth of competing organisms, especially grand positive organisms. Counting colonies is really easy because we've got nice, deep, dark blue colonies. You can count them with your naked eye, but I like to tell folks to go ahead and use a really inexpensive 10 times stereoscope like this one here. Using a stereoscope helps in a couple of ways. A, it will 
increase the accuracy of counts by the technician simply because you can see the quality so much more easily. And B, because of that, it decreases eye strain, especially for a technician that has to count dozens or maybe even hundreds of plates every day. So if we follow the things that I've mentioned above and we pertain to our standard operating procedures or SOPs, you're going to find that growing and culturing MFC colonies using MFC media works great. You're going to get good, accurate, reliable, and consistent results over time. I hope this has been a helpful and informative video, and thanks for joining